Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City. Making a very rare appearance here at the Jazz Standard is Cuban-born pianist and composer Harold Lopez Nessa. And he's making a very, very important niche with this 14-city tour in which he's playing a lot of important dates here in North America as well as United States and Canada. Tonight we sat down and we talked about this brand new record that he just released called New Day in which he's incorporating electronics as far as the Fender Rhodes and keyboards as well as percussion, a great departure from his trio of recordings that he's made. We also sat down and talked about his roots growing up in Cuba and how he's bridging the gap to incorporate and fuse all his musical styles and training and exposing them to American audiences. And also we sat down and talked about some of his most important influences as far as growing up playing piano and classical and what classical music has done with his training to his jazz playing here in the States. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the sounds of pianist Harold Lopez Nissa live here on the Peace Report here at the Jazz Standard here in New York City.
congratulations and welcome back to the United States. This is a big moment for you. You're doing a little over 20 dates here in the United States. You've played some prestigious jazz festivals. Tell me about the reception of New Day. This is your brand new CD. And tell me about the response playing the new music to your American fans. Well, I'm, I'm really happy to be in the States for my second time. I mean, by, my, by myself with my music and um, I mean I have the opportunity to play in some wonderful places like Monterey, San Francisco Jazz Center, here in New York and Washington a little bit and we're gonna play in Boston and um, you know for a music musician who live in Cuba it's not too easy to come, come here to the States so I'm very grateful for that and I love the you know the crowd in 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 America is 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 great. I I feel like there is something similar with Cuba. I don't know. We yeah, we are like we're in the same how to say continent. So I don't know. I I think something very strong with with the people from the America. So I just love <laughs> this CD is really 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 it's it's funky because it's a little different than your last two projects you this time you've incorporated a percussionist as well as you're playing the fender roads and keyboards on here how did that enhance what your musically or uh, fans are used to seeing you in your trio well that's that's really for me it's really different I, I'm I must a piano player I used to study classical music in the piano so play an instru an electrical instrument is, is is something different for me so uh, when I play this I, I have another ideas that I don't have in the piano because I am trying something new something real new for me I, n I don't used to play that so I don't know if I am doing well or I don't know if, if I know everything about these instruments but it's very fun it's very you know when you play that and we we you make something new for you that's very exciting and it's 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 wonderful trying something new and trying some different sounds so some make i don't know so it's 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 pretty good <laughs> sorry my english is <laughs> you're doing all right you're doing all right you're doing fine now i understand that pianist chucho valdez was really kind of the influence of you bringing the instrumentation of the Fender Rhodes and keyboards to this project. Yeah, of course. I I listened to Chucho when he was playing Fender Rhodes in the 60s and 70s, uh, also Emiliano Salvador, another Cuban pianist, and this is, I think, my biggest influence. That's come from from days, and also from, of course, from Herbie Hancock. Uh, uh, American musician that I love to, but I think uh, it's more than the style that uh, that the Cuban pianist used to play. That so, uh. you know, I want to ask you because I've interviewed quite a few Cuban pianists on the Pace Report. Omar Sosa. Yeah. Um, what is it about Cuban piano players, with the fact that you're incorporating African as well as the 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 latin side of your culture and heritage to the music what is it about the piano style and the training that's different than say someone coming here from the united states as far as piano playing well i think the fair thing is that in cuba the musician only have a school for classical music so when the pianists come from from classical training to try to play something different like jazz or like Cuban music that that's that is the first difference I think because you have another like another, another training with the with your instrument it's very different when when you study like only jazz in piano and you have another to touch and it's another feeling so and we learn the, the jazz and the I don't know Latin rhythms and even the, the African rhythms from the street. We don't have a school for learning that. So it's, it's, it's different that if you go to a school and learn jazz, uh, you know, you, you have more elements 
for for doing well but us we we do well what we can so we listen to another another musician we listen to chucho we listen to omar sosa i listen to every cuban pianist and i i saw every concert in cuba when i was in the school and i tried to play the like like him like days so i try and try and it's going 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 little and little and little so i, I don't know this is for me this, this is what i think Chucho was very instrumental in bringing the percussive side of Latin music to his piano style. Yeah. And I see you playing, and I see a hybrid of contemporary Cuban music as well as classical in your piano style. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. We, we, we are in this moment of, of, of our life. We learn a lot different things than our president these present musicians so we we have another way to express but ourselves is is different we live in this moment so we we grow up with with our uh, well uh, with your influences yeah your, your we, influences. okay and what and also what's happening in cuba so in this moment with with the country and with everything so we are we are different yeah you know Harold I have to ask you you know one of the things that your trio is very 
instrumental in doing is you're keeping the youth of this music alive. And your brother, who happens to be your drummer and has been on all of your recordings, mm -hmm. is a driving force of this trio. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I be playing with him for our, all our life. So he's, he's, he's the, he's the strong of 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 us. He always he always makes something that bring bring to me some inexpective thing. You know, we play this, we know these songs. We already played a lot of times, but every night when we play, it's different because he's always trying to do something, trying to do something. So sometimes great, sometimes it's, it's like me. I am I always trying to do something, but he's very creative. So he always bring me something new. Um, it's still the trio, you know, like. <laughs> Harold, you came into a very musical family. Your mother was a pianist, and your father is was a percussionist also. Well, I guess that it's in the DNA of your brother. Tell me about the first time that the piano came into your psyche. When was it that you knew the piano was the instrument that you were going to play? Well, the piano always was in my family. I grew up with the piano. In, we we grew up in a little apartment in the middle of Havana, where it's all the folklore on the percussion in the street, and everything, all this stuff. But I... I remember the piano, and you know, in the living room of my house, it's the first thing that when you come coming in, can you? Uh, it's the first thing that you see the piano, and then I always hear my mother play piano and teach piano. Uh, we go into concert of our uncle, who is a piano player also, and our grandmother also. He she used to play piano, so. I, it's it's like it's like my life. I I th I feel that that it was always with me. Then I began to study real piano with eight years old, and then I I fell in love with the piano and and yeah until today. What was the classical part of your training? How intense and how rigorous was it for you? And when did you break free from the classical part and decide I'm gonna go ahead and do this jazz thing full time? Yeah, well, when I was like 12, 13, I, I was very, very hard. I I used to study like six hours a day or eight hours a day. And then for, I don't know, four or five years. And then when I was 18, I I I looking for something different, trying to to play, not no no jazz, just trying to play like popular music in Cuba and trying something different. I was very hard at the beginning because I didn't know how to do that. Uh, in classically, you have all all right writing, and you have to play like that. And this this music was very new for me, so I just trying. And I was playing with my father a little bit in my home, and with my brother, of course. And then I I feel that I want I want to try to to make more more of this. This this is very when you go to state and begin to play, you are free. You you can do whatever you want. So it's very exciting, and it's today is my my life. You know, go to the state and try to play something and try to always be different. So it's it's my life. <laughs>
wonderful opportunity of playing and getting more exposure in France. And the Parisians are very, very dear to the music. They really appreciate it. Tell me what it was like for the first time playing in Paris. And then also, your journey also allowed you to win a prestigious jazz competition at one of the major jazz festivals in the Monroe. Well, that, that was beautiful. My grandmother, uh, she was French. So when I go to France for my first time, I was like, I think 19 and 20 for, for play my the first time. And I, I just fall in love with Paris. I, I knew it for for the house of my of my grandmother, I just listened many music from mm, French composer, and I know a lot of France. But when I was there, I just see this beautiful city, and and I fell in love also with Paris. I I love Paris, and then I began to play. It's the it's the it's the country where who I play the more. So. I play like I don't know. I go three or four, or four, or four times a year. Times a year. Okay. So, so it's it's I have a very special relation with friends, um, and I think they they love they love jazz and they love also Cuban music. So it's 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 good for us <laughs> because we play like Cuban jazz. So it's a good combination there. You know, you recorded your first, your debut, and your second record in Paris. And New Day, you re decided to go home to, to Cuba yeah. to record. I guess, well, listening to the record, it does seem like you did pay more homage to your Cuban roots on this album. Well, maybe. I I, I just want to do it with with the musician who who I used to play in Cuba. Uh, we grow up in the school together and they know all my music so it's very easy for me to play with they. And and also do it in Cuba was very special because it is it is the city Havana, I mean it's the city who inspired my music or or the most than other cities because the you know, in Havana there is a it's it's great. I I love Havana. We have like a lot of problems, but we have like a lot of happiness. Everybody in the street is happy, and they say hello to you when you walk in the street. And when your car is broken, and you wow do this to your car, and they come and help you, and it's fun. I just I just love Cuba and the style of. Of life there, and 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 I think we can feel that in in in, in our music, of course, because it's not the same when you wake up and well, the car is broken. How I get to the studio? <laughs> wow, do do do. That's that is different. When you come to the studio, you come with another feeling. <laughs> it's not the same <laughs> that if you're doing in France. <laughs> in Cuba, how were you exposed to a lot of international music including american jazz and pop and soul music well it, it it was hard to to have the you know the original cds and cassettes or whatever from from international music like american music but we we trying to know um i think we know a lot of of american music we in cuba we we are always looking forward what what is new in the states? What is the new musician who play? What is, they are doing? So when some musician come with a new recording, that they, you know, we share all the musicians, and we 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 keep in touch with what what is that is happening here. So yeah, I I have a lot of influence. I mean, my first the first CD that I really really love it from jazz music was from Herbie Hancock, Herbie Hancock, um, New Standard of 1960. I, so yeah, it's, it's very, very, very hard. Yeah. 